Have you ever wondered how you can get ultra slow motion out of a normal camera like this? In this video, I'm going to show you how to do that with a small little trick. So let's say you forgot to shoot in slow motion and you need slow motion in the edit but you can't reshoot it or you shot in slow motion but you just need that extra little bit of slow-mo but the frame rate doesn't allow it. So this is the Sony a6500 and it can shoot 120 frames per second and in most cases that's going to be enough to slow it down to 20%. So the thing is the normal timeline is going to be in 24 frames per second. That means if you shoot in 120 frames per second, you can slow it down to 20%. But sometimes you need just that extra little bit of slow motion. And let's say you want to slow it down to 10%. Usually, usually if you shoot in 120 frames per second and you slow it down even further than 20%, you get uh, missed frames. So when you go through the footage, there's all of a sudden there's like freeze frames because the camera only recorded 120 frames and you slowed it down even further there's like still frames into the footage and you don't want that because then it looks really like choppy or anything it doesn't look smooth anymore there's something there's a little trick in premiere pro called optical flow and it's actually really simple to do i'm going to jump onto the computer and i'll show you how to do it so i got this clip here and it's just me throwing up bottle cap into the air and it happens pretty fast and I actually shot this in 60 frames so I shot this in 60 frames and now you can because the time is in 24 frames you can slow it down to 40% so let's slow it down to 40% everything looks fine so because because the time here is so short where the where the cap is in focus and everything, I I wish I could slow it down even further. So 40% is the limit, but let's say I want to slow it down to, let's say 15%, which makes it shot in 60% and 15% is way over over the max that you could should slow it down. So when I see how choppy it is, and that's why, because like, if I go through the footage, see, there's like freeze frames there. So that's why when I play it back, it's like choppy. And to avoid this, there's a simple trick. Um, you just go to right click and you just go to time interpolation and you go just to optical flow here. Then what you have to do, it's really important that you have to render that out, otherwise it wouldn't work. So let's render this out real quick. Set an in and out point, hit up render into out here. And it just renders that. And now when I play back, it's way smoother. And there's like two ways to do this. Either you change it here into the optical flow. And then you could also use um, the time remapping keyframes here if you just want to slow uh, slow down a certain part or there's if or you just go directly into speed and duration and you can slow it down and change it here so there's two ways to do this uh, whichever you find more convenient and this you can't use the keyframes you you have to keep in mind you can only do this with footage where there's not a lot of movement see here like this is a little like wobbly you can't really notice it when it's like happening like this maybe 15 percent is a little bit too much because remember we shot in 60 that can only sh uh, let us sh uh, slow it down to 40 percent so maybe we should stick to something more like 20 percent could don't push it because then it gets more wobbly and wobbly the more you push it. So don't push it too much. And I can show you two more examples what difference optical flow actually makes. The first part is with non-optical flow and then the second part I applied optical flow to see how the difference is here. So you see how choppy it is and then all of a sudden it gets smoother. Like look at that difference. And here's the second example which shows what optical flow can do. So the first clip has the frame sampling and the second one has the 
um, optical flow. So let's see the difference. See, see how choppy it is here. And then now the optical flow comes in. It's way smoother. This looks actually really usable. The only thing with optical flow is that you can't use it with all kinds of footage. You can only use it with footage where there's only one moving part and there's not much moving into the clip. But I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So here in this clip, there's lots of stuff moving. There's lots of moving parts. There's not just one element that's moving. So this was shot in, let's see. So this clip was actually shot in 24 frames per second. So let's try and slow it down with uh, to 50%, but well, that's not like pushing it too much. And let's apply optical flow here and render it out. We pr probably gonna see like lots of weird stuff going on. So let's play it. Yeah, see like this looks just weird. So this is not working here, optical flow. You can't use it on any type of footage. This, this is not working at all. Because um, there's too many moving parts here. You can see when I play it back, it just looks, looks so weird. So you have to keep that in mind when you want to use optical flow. But if you just have one moving part, it's a good way to get super slow-mo that looks smooth. So I hope you find this video helpful and you learned something today for your creative work. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments and I will answer them. Thanks so much for watching and sticking around to the very end. And I'll see you guys in the next video.